Dylan of, of, of the Jews in the 60s. All of Bob Dylan's Jews, too. But he wrote a lot. It's kind of funny. We're going to continue with the Shema.
band, huh? We are finely tuned. We've rehearsed several times for this this year. <laughs> Which is rare for jazz musicians. It's like, we have, we have a, let's do a rehearsal. Like, ah, I don't do a rehearsal. <laughs> what time? The time's, ah, I can't do it. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> All right, we're going to try something here. Frank, you're, you're not in this one, but don't move, okay? This is, this is something we worked on the other day. This is called the Henny. Yeah. Oh, and why didn't anybody tell me not to, uh, I mean, it's my colleague. It's not, it's not good. Uh, say a blessing. Baruch HaTah Adonai, Lohanam Al-Halam, Ashrei Kitshon, Mishwetav, it's Manu, Lekita, Teif, Al-Hasinzi. It means, blessed are you, Lord our God, creator of the universe, for commanding us regarding the fringed, uh, regarding the fringes, tzitzit. And uh, the main thing about the tzitzit is not the cloth, it's not the, whether it's big or small, it's about the fringes. Because the fringes are mentioned in the Old Testament. When you look at the fringes, you remember, you're supposed to remember the commandments. That's the reason. So, what I'm about to do for you now is called the Hinnini, literally means, here I am. Um, when uh, Abraham was in uh, the field and he was going to do that terrible thing uh, to, uh, to uh, Isaac, the uh, Lord said, uh, Abraham, and Abraham said, Hinnini, Hinnini, here I am. Uh, so, most of what we recite in the High Holidays utilizes uh, the first person plural, I don't want to see that. But the, the Hinnini prayer is a meditation traditionally recited by the cantor prior to the Musaf service. The Musaf traditional service, you've got a morning service, you've got the Torah reading, and then you've got the Musaf the additional service. I just told you in the very beginning why we, why we have all these prayers instead of pushing a, a, a goat off a cliff and calling it the scapegoats. It's the origin of scapegoat. Instead of doing that, we we uh, we have prayers. This Hinnini opens up the Musaf prayer, and it, and it, what it basically says is, um, "Here I am. I'm the cantor. I'm impoverished in deeds and merits, but nonetheless, I've come before you, God, to plead on behalf of you of your people Israel." So, cantors historically have really this is a this is a, the main thing. And some of you might have gone to synagogues with the cantor would walk down the aisle to deliver this this prayer. It was so dramatic. Unfortunately, in modernity, when usually at this time in the service, when cantors are walking down the aisle, most people are looking at their clocks and going home because it's about one o'clock when they're doing this. So, so there you are. But this is the Hinnini, and uh, I'm going to do it for you. Now. Oh, 
but you just experienced that. I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to go out with the Chatzik Kaddish. This is a Chatzik Oh, by the way, you only hear that. You're only going to hear that Rosh Hashanah morning and Yom Kippur morning. No other time. Unless it's an interview for a job. <laughs> Cousin, can you do a Hannity? <laughs> it's true. He knows. That's why he's laughing so hard. Like, he obviously knows. All right. We're going to do the Chatzik Kaddish. Uh, and we're using the, this is the melody for for uh, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Ikatav, Ikatash, Shemer Abav, Yalma Tivra. Some of the people I see here, there's, there's a lot online. Um, shout out to um, uh, well, Tucson Jim. We got this gentleman online on Zoom. His name is Tucson Jim. He's our security guy. <laughs> I'm not kidding. He's great, and and, and he, he makes sure that people that are going to come into the waiting room, you know, the Zoom thing, right? Well, he's our he's our security guy, and he's, we love him. Thank you very much, Tucson. And uh, you know, Casey and family are here, and Melissa. Alash and uh, Nancy Kaufman, Marcy Pasternak, and um, Texas Tim, Tucson Jim, Texas, you know, everybody's got to... uh, Alan Lash, uh, Hope Winters, Kosher Biker, Kosher Biker. He's very cool. He's got long hair and he's very cool. Uh, he's, I envy him because he has the long hair. As, you, as well you should. Yes. Uh, 
uh, Ellen Lefson, Rabbi Marie, Marguerite, Colorado, Dr. Spitzer, uh, Jonathan, uh, and Marvin Gruber. These are these are like our people. Me, uh, not like they are our people. Ellen Rose, uh, Ann Hester, Elias, uh, Rabbi Love is here. Jackie Grossman, um, and uh, Robert uh, Bressman, Sharon Suntag, Albert Small, Julie, um, uh, Barbara Markowitz, uh, Sharon Katz. Rosalind Preston, uh, Todd Rubin, Kathy Elkies, looks like mom is home. Uh, uh, Leora Cohen, uh, Diane Diamondson, Ben Small, uh, Iva and, and Bill Luffman, and, uh, and I, I hope I, I hope I got everybody. If I, if I left out your name, I apologize. I'm trying really hard. We continue now with literally the standing prayer. Uh, standing would be Amida. Uh, it's one of the oldest pieces of our liturgy. Uh, it, it originally was known as the Shimona Esrei, the 18 benedictions. And we actually say all 18 every morning. That's a tradition. Jews worship three times a day, traditionally, morning, afternoon, and evening. And uh, But this, this prayer is also known by other names. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Avot, uh, that's literally a, uh, uh, the fathers, the Imahot. Anyway, we continue with the Avot. <laughs> Thank you. 
tell you what what a pleasure it is to sit here and play with these amazing musicians. I don't know, those of you who are, are, are musicians can appreciate what it feels like to play with people who are just so wonderful. Oh, yes. And I want to invite up uh, Evan Premin, who's going to sing the Machal. I can get it out. Hold on. Machal Kael Chaim. So this this song is the um, here's the tra here's the translation. Just just so you know, before you start, he sustains the living with loving kindness and with great compassion revives the dead. He supports the fallen, heals the sick, sets captives free, and keeps his faith with those who sleep in the dust. But the key, the key line here, which I, you know, I, I know I repeat myself, but sometimes some of you are new. He sustains the living with loving kindness and with great compassion revives the dead. For those of you that might have had any doubt that the Jewish tradition believes in, um, in a revival of the dead, in afterlife, coming back, you're wrong. We do. We believe. And, and, and further, the explanation is Jewish funerals, before Jewish funerals, traditional Jews want to be buried in, in, in Jerusalem. Because when the resurrection comes, when, when, you know, when the temple will be rebuilt, they'll get up first. They're closest to the temple. That's why Orthodox Jews want to be flung back when their family members have died. And the same thing when we bury our own here, there's a, usually a, 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 a little bit of earth in a plastic bag that you have to open and pour on the casket. Uh, and that is symbolic of the earth of the Jews. Uh, it's not symbolic, it is the earth of the Jews. Anyway, that being said, how are you? All right, All right here we go. <laughs>
Shema Kolenu. Shema Shema Kolenu. Hear our voice, Lord our God. Spare us, pity us, accept our prayer in your gracious love. Shema Kolenu. <laughs>
Does that sound good to you guys? All right. Thank you so much. Who was that? My one was clapping. All right. So now we come to um, uh, the this one of the central themes, probably the most predominant theme of the, of the holidays. I mentioned earlier the idea being inscribed in the uh, in the book of life. But there's this there's this anthropomorphical image of God and angels standing up in heaven and people parading before them and, and the book is open. You know? And I don't I don't have to have a conversation with God and the angels. I, I have a feeling God knows you're walking yes, yes, you know, uh oh, uh, maybe. We'll see. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, this this song, Rosh Hashanah Yikatevun, you know, is talks about that. Who shall leave this world? Who shall be born into it? Who will live? Who will die? And we're going to do the traditional uh, melody uh, set to a, our, our, modern, our modern set.
But it's, it's true. I mean, maybe we should all be really grateful and come through. We're all here together, you know? And yeah, we've, we've probably all made a lot of mistakes this past year. But, uh, well, the pastor has a message. I don't want, I want to step on his message. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but here we go. We're going to do now that same song sent, uh, filtered through Leonard uh, Cohen's mind. And he wrote a song called Who by Fire. It's, it's uh... <laughs> Bye. 
Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do now for you a song called the Alenu. Um, let us now praise the Lord of all. Uh, in, in this prayer on the high holidays, when this prayer is is sung by the cantor and usually the rabbi, um, they face the ark instead of facing out. I would turn to the wall, for example. And during the song, they literally fall on their knees and and then fall literally on their faces. Hopefully the carpet has been cleaned prior to the, uh, because this is as if we're approaching God when we're singing this song. It's a very powerful moment, and if you don't know what's going on, you think you think that the cantor just had a coronary, but, but it's not true. Literally, this is part, part of our ritual, and there's usually a couple people that help the, uh, help the cantor and the rabbi up on the floor. Um, uh, so, and, and this melody that we're about to sing, this is one of those, uh, from the High Holidays, uh, that is literally the melody is considered as if it was handed down to us when the Torah was handed down to Moses. That's the tradition. Right? It might not be quite that old, but it's pretty cool. So, the Aleinu. You ready? <laughs> Thank you. 
that's the arrangement they had in mind. But anyway, a lot of fun. Beautiful, beautiful melody. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to call um, Evan to come back up. He's going to sing another song for you in the Book of Life. May we be inscribed for peace and blessings and happy lives. The safe era, honey. here at the bitter end thank god this is a great and and all of you i just want to give you should give yourselves a hand for coming out it's hard it's hard but here we are um, uh what i wanted to say to you is judaism is intensely aware of the uh of the power of speech and its potential to help or to harm and the rabbis note that the universe itself was created through speech and god said let there be light yes and, there, and when God said that, there was light. Of all the sins um, that, we, that we talk about on Yom Kippur in traditional service, and we'll have, we'll have a few coming up, and the ones that we're about to recite, um, many of these sins are committed through Alpeh, from the mouth, by speech. The Talmud tells us that the tongue is an instrument so dangerous that it must be hidden from view behind two protective walls. 
makes sense, right? The mouth and the teeth to prevent its misuse. The harm done by speech is even worse than the harm done by stealing or by cheating someone. Money can be lost or repaid, but the harm done by speech can never be repaired. The rabbis use an analogy of, uh, uh, go take a pillow, an old kind of pillow with feathers, you know, take a hole in the pillow and scatter the feathers. Go pick up all the feathers. Why don't you put words out there, they're feathers. Especially today, it's social media, you know. So we have to be, we have to filter. You know, not that we don't have thoughts that aren't appropriate sometimes, which we shouldn't have, but we have to learn to filter. We learn this. Lost it. Um, so, uh, for this reason, some sources indicate that there's no forgiveness for disparaging speech. Once again, right now, it's time for us to ask forgiveness for the things we've said and the things we've done to hurt people, people we care about, the people we love. So I'm not going to ask you to rise. We're going to everybody be. Uh, we're going to do the Ve'al Kulam um, and the Ashamnu. Um, now um, the the Al Kulam is coming up. Um, give me one second. Let me just make sure I got this. Here, just take your hands. Get it. Take, get it to your heart. I'm going to list a few a few sins for you. Might not cover all your sins. I know you. But it'll hit some of them. Uh, so just touch your heart gently when I say it. For the sin of anger against those who challenge me. For the sin of belittling those I don't understand. For the sin of criticizing without caring. For the sin of purposefully finding faults. For the sin of saying, it doesn't matter, because it does. For the sin of kindness too often withheld. For the sin of harboring resentment. For all these sins, O oh God, for all these sins, O oh God of forgiveness, forgive me, pardon me, grant me atonement.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to do the Asham Nu. No, this is the one where uh, we're going to sing. Uh, uh, let's play the melody for them. Lie, 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 Okay, that's your melody. That's your solo. One more time. Lie, lie, lie. them in Hebrew, but these are just so you know what you're what you're admitting to. <laughs> a guilt, faithless, robbed, spoken badly, committed iniquity, caused evil, been some of you didn't do it, you know, that's what but I'll say the Hebrew, imagine things that maybe you did. Alright, here we go. Uh to, uh, lie, la, lie, lie. A few more. Yatsura, he's a new, lots new, marad new, niat new, sarad new, avi Shandu. One more time. Hey, I lie, 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 I'd like you to turn to the person next to you. All right, because uh, I'll look at Bob. Why not? I'll look at you guys. Um, and uh, even if you don't know him, it's all right, because uh, we're all we're all one. Echad, echad. So I'd like you to turn to that person and say to them, Salicha. Please forgive me. Okay. Now look at that person and say, Salakti. I forgive you. I, uh, I'm sorry, guys. Whatever I do that. <laughs> sorry, Jeff. Carol, I'm sorry. Where are you? All right. Yeah. She's got a longer list than maybe you. Maybe you. Uh... All right. Um, so that is that's the uh, that is the uh, the ritual that we that we do to make amends. You know, today's a good day if you when you go home. And you think about it, if there's somebody at a, you know, then that you don't know why you don't talk to them anymore, this would be a great day to pick up the phone and say, hi, how are you? Do little things. You know, don't, make, don't do big things. Do little things. Um, so um, we're going uh, to continue now. Um, we're doing good. Um, the sermon is coming up in a few minutes. Right now we're going to, we're going to, um, we're going to, let's do Ose Shalom.
We have a we have a, a, a song in it that's um, different than Shabbat that we sing Adonai Adonai. Here it goes.
everybody's going to say Shema. 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 Yisrael. Adonai. Eloheinu. Adonai. Elon. Next sentence. Portion. Uh, usually it's Oliver that does it, but he did it. God bless you, uh, And uh, it's leading us with the Torah, and you're going to be kissing the Torah and 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 saying hello to Emma. How are you? What's new? What's master? You doing it? Here we go. Torah, Torah, G. Torah, Torah, Torah. Somebody is reading from the Torah. Does anybody here know how to read from the Torah? Let me see a hand. How about somebody online? There's a bunch of people can read. You, online, you, Sim Shalomers, you know how to read the Torah. Let me see a hand. They're nervous that, oh, yeah, uh, they're nervous that I'll call on them. That's what it is. Um, so, um, um, we're going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to read, I think I put it on your sheets. Do you have the Torah reading there? You can follow along. We're gonna do. You will do the blessings together. Let me just tell you the sources for Yom Kippur in the Old Testament. Why we even have this holiday? Uh, number number one in Leviticus uh, in Hebrew. That's Vayikra. Leviticus. Uh, it's written that on the tenth day of the seventh month. This is the seventh month is Tishrei. This is the tenth day of the seventh month. God said that the people must not work in order to cleanse and atone for their sins. The Kohen will lead in the atonement of all the people. The ritual of Azazel, the scapegoat, is written. Remember I told you before, the origin really of getting rid of your sins, it was done with a scapegoat? That's the source, by Yikra. Right. The next reference is in uh, Bamidbar, in Numbers. It says the 10th day of the seventh month is a holy day, reaffirming that date. And the last reference that we have in the Torah is in uh, is in Vayikra again in Leviticus, and it says that um, uh, God said to Moses on the tenth day of the month is a day of atonement, and be holy, uh, and 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 will be holy. Yom Kippurim. So those are our three sources for uh, Yom Kippur. Let's do the blessings together. All right, for, before the Torah reading, I will help. I'm not going to leave you out there for now. Ladies and gentlemen online, are you you're going to say the blessing? Hold on, let me make sure they're... Uh, everybody, you say the blessings with me. Baruch Hu et Adonai, Amavorah, Baruch Adonai, Baruch Adonai, 
Eloheinu melech alam, asher bachar banu mikol ha'amim, v'natan lanu et torato, baruch ata adonai, noten ha'torah. Very good, you all, a lot of you remember your bar mitzvahs. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to read, imagine I'm reading from the Torah. Amen. I would say amen. I wouldn't say the blessing. You would say the blessing. The person that has the honor would say the blessing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say amen. Um, uh, uh, unless I didn't say the blessing, I was just the reader. So let's pretend I'm just the reader. Amen. By Daber Adonai Moshe Lemur. That phrase you hear throughout the read Torah reads hundreds of times. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, in fact, if you learn that in the Bible, I don't know anymore. You know that a half a percent of all the Torah reading. It's pretty funny. It's full of plaisir, that trope. I didn't make that up, by the way. That wasn't a jazz riff. The Estor la Chodesh, Hashemi Hazeh. Um, Yom Kippurim, Yom Kippurim, Mikra Kodesh, Yehelachem, Fani Tem, Et Nafshotot, Techem, Ikra Tem, Ishel Adonai, Yom Lachalot, Tatsu, Baetzem, Hayom, Hazem, Ki, Yom Kippurim, Hu, Lechaper, Alechem, Vifnei, Adonai Eloheichem. So I'll read, I'll read the translation. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Mark this, the tenth day of the seventh month as the day of atonement. It shall be a sacred occasion for you. For you shall practice self-denial and you shall bring an offering by fire to the Lord. You shall do no work throughout the day. For it is a, to a day of atonement on which expiation is made on your behalf before the Lord. Your expiation, big word. That means your sin is transfer of your sin. You're gonna, we're going to put them on the scapegoat. That's what the Torah is saying. Uh, but it also says it shall be a sacred occasion for you shall practice self-denial. What's self-denial? You're not supposed to eat. You're going to fast. What's self-denial? You're not supposed to act like you're, like you're a big deal. You're supposed to strip away your stuff. You don't wear leather. In the old days, leather was, you know, expensive, I guess. You don't, uh, you know, you don't wear perfumes and things like that. Strip it all away. That's that's how the rabbis interpreted that, that uh, statement. Oh, I got two more cents. Ki, kol nefesh asher lo tune v'yitzem hayom hazeh v'nichrata me'eh me'ameha v'chol nefesh asher taseh kol melacha v'yitzem so this is a continuation. Indeed, any person who does not practice self-denial, according to the Torah, that day shall be cut off from his kin. So there's a penalty to be made for not, for not doing prescribed rituals. And whoever does any work throughout the day, I will cause that person to have a lot of problems. That's all I'm going to say. So there you go. So let's do the blessing after the Torah read together. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam Asher Natan Lanu Torah Emet Bechaye Olam Nata Betochenu Baruch Ata Adonai Noten Very good, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very proud of you. You did a good job. You have a blessing. So you do a reward. Rabbi Yitzchak, a brilliant Talmudist, that means he studied the Talmud, yes, uh, and his student Moshe were traveling to the village of Vilna in Eastern Europe when they had to stop for the night and pitch a tent in an empty field. After some evening prayers, Rabbi Epstein and Moshe retire for the evening. Some hours later, Rabbi Epstein wakes up and nudges his faithful student, Moshe. 
Look up at the sky and tell me what you see. I see millions and millions of stars, Rabbi Epstein, replies Moshe. And what do you deduce from that? Moshe ponders for a minute. Well, astronomically, it conveys the vastness of the heavens. Meteorology, me, me, meteorologically, meteorologically, I suspect that we will have a brilliant day tomorrow. Theologically, I can see that God is all powerful and that we are a small and insignificant part of his universe. What does it tell you, Rabbi Epstein? Rabbi Epstein is silent for a moment. Moshe, he says, someone has stolen our tent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're going to throw out some Yiddish terms. I want to hear, I want to hear, who knows the, 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 the definition of cockamamie? Cockamamie, yes? Crazy, thank you very much. Um, uh, uh, what to, uh, to, uh, to futz? Futz. Phil, Phil, very, very good, we're going to roll it. What's chutzpah? There you go. Um, who's a Ghana? Uh, fetch? That's <laughs> good. And who's a Mitch? Okay, good, good. What about Mr. Gus? Crazy, crazy good. Who's a Nevish? <laughs> Mom is not a nevish. <laughs> oh, okay, yes, a nevish, a poor person, a kind of a nerdy person, yes. Um, how about a shlemiel? She says this is a jerk. Jerk. Uh, a, 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 a shlemiel is a, yes, a, a fool. Um, he's always screwing up. How about this one? A shlemazel. Who said that? Unlucky. Very good. That's right. That's right. Uh, <laughs> that's, right. Uh, that's right. That's right. That's right. How about schmatis? What are schmatis? Very good. And uh, what's schmilkis? What is it? Ants in your pants. Ants in your pants. Yes, yes. Can't sit. Can't, gotta do something. Gotta move. Gotta. Hey, forget. What's that? Like, like a three-year-old kid. You got shilkas? What's, what's going on? All right. Uh, how about shtick? What's shtick? Story. Particular. Yeah, yeah. A shtick. Shtick is a routine. That's his shtick. That's his shtick. That's his gift. How about gvel? That's what I do when I'm up here with these guys and, and with all of you. I'm quelling. Quelling. You, you quell when, when your family's doing something great. You know? Um, what about schmutz? Very good. And, and what about uh, surus? Problems. That's right. Bukkis? <laughs> you guys, you, your Yiddish is good. It's very good. Two rabbis and a priest. Decide to go fishing one day. Out in the middle of the lake, the Monsignor suddenly realizes they forgot their breakfasts. The first rabbi says, nah, I'll take care of it. Whereupon he steps out of the boat, walks across the water to the dock, retrieves the breakfast, and then walks across the water to get it back in the boat. The priest looks on in amazement, but decides it's better not to comment or question. The trio finishes their breakfast, and the priest realizes they left the car on the dock as well. The second rabbi says, yeah, I'll take care of it. Whereupon he steps out of the boat, walks across the water to the dock, retrieves his coffee, and then walks back across the water to get back. The priest again looks on in amazement but decides it's better not to comment or question. A few hours later, with only an hour or so of good fishing left, the priest realizes he left extra bait on the dock. The priest immediately announces he'll go to get the bait. He steps out of the boat and promptly sinks into the water. He climbs back into the boat 
uh, shushes the rabbis as they try to speak and, and, and tries again. And again, he falls into the water. As the priest struggles for the third time to get into the boat, the first rabbi looks at the other and says, we should explain him where the rocks are? <laughs> you get it? We should explain where the rocks are? The rocks there. That's how a tourist asks, that was a long way to go for that kind of a bunch. A tourist asks a 90 year old rabbi praying at the Wailing Wall, What are you praying for? Rabbi says, World peace. 80 years now. Tourist says, Is it working? Rabbi says, It's like talking to a wall. <laughs> I'm almost done. <laughs> I thought that was good. That was a good one. So, a priest, a rabbi and a priest are the lone passengers on a plane. Suddenly the plane's engines conk out. Immediately the priest grabs the only parachute and jumps out. The pilot asks, the pilot asks the rabbi, how will you survive? The rabbi answers, don't worry about me. The priest took my talus bag by mistake. Talus <laughs> bag, but it won't be long now, said the rabbi as he circumcised the little boy. <laughs> All right. Among the most powerful things in our life, uh, in our lives, are friendships. And uh, the true friends come to, come to hear you perform at gigs or, or all over New York. True friends uh, invite you into their homes on holidays. True friends meet you at a coffee shop in Harlem every Tuesday during COVID to hang out and, and, and catch about current events. Um, and true friends deliver sermons when you're too lazy to come up with something to say on your week before. I'm very pleased to welcome my friend, Pastor Robert Brescher, who will be offering his inspirational message for Yom Kippur. Pastor Brescher was the uh, spiritual leader for many years of the West Park Presbyterian Church on the corner of 86th. And um, he's doing all kinds of stuff now. He is a pastor, teacher, conflict mediator. He's doing a, a racial justice oversight. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. So without any further ado, uh, I present to you Pastor Robert Bashir. I'm going to give you the stage. And we're going to do some work. We have to write it. Yeah, my microphone is good. So it's good to see you all here today. And I realize that it's been two years since I set foot in the bitter end. In fact, the last time I was here, it was the Yom Kippur service. It's always an honor and privilege to get to share in the service with you, to get to share some of my thoughts. I was thinking and realizing as I was putting this together. I've been participating in Jewish High Holy Day services for 44 years now. First with colleagues, then friends, and ultimately with family. Now I'm here with you, I send Shalom Avarim. I've really come and grown to appreciate the art of these days. Celebrating a new year at just the right time. I mean, this is when school starts again, the time when vacation is over and when people come back to work. It's a new season for TV and Broadway and football. And given how we do with our regular New Year's Day resolutions, it's always good to have a chance to go back and start over again, most especially in a year like this one. And when you get to Simba to Rod, you literally get to turn the page. Okay. So these are the days of awe. It's a chance to review your life, to make corrections. Spiritual liturgy narrative is even more serious than that. So what we heard today is when names are being written into the book of life. I love the drama of the repetitive warnings that the doors are inexorably swinging shut. Here on Yom Kippur morning, the morning after Kol Nidre, midway through the fast, this service is like getting to the two minute warning, okay? 
But as far as getting yourself into the book of life, you've not done the work yet. You've got just about enough time for a spiritual Hail Mary. Well, maybe I could use a better metaphor. The real content of that spiritual work has to do with repentance and forgiveness. And I've really appreciated learning that in Judaism, you can't ask God to forgive you for something you did to someone who is still around. You have to go to them. It's almost like if you really want to make Yom Kippur meaningful, you need to try to take a first step, as you heard Steve mention earlier, towards healing at least one relationship before you come here. If you haven't done that, well, the fast isn't over yet. We have a tradition in Christianity, uh, our defining ritual, perhaps our most important sacrament, this Holy Communion. I'm not even going to begin to try and explain that to you now. But the point is, we used to have a part of our liturgy that said that anyone who had anything against a brother or sister should leave the table and go take care of it before participating in communion. It's not that I ever actually saw anyone leave, but the point is, it's the idea. Before we can get together with God, if we want to have oneness with God, we've got to have oneness with each other. That's all there is to it. What's at stake here is repentance. Shuva, turning around, going a new way. In my tradition, we have a Greek word, metanoia, changing your heart, your spiritual being. If you think about it, metanoia is like the opposite of paranoia. Because the greatest impediment to changing, to repenting, to taking the first step towards reconciliation is fear. In the Christian scriptures, there's a saying, perfect love casts out fear. But I've learned in my life that the opposite is equally true. That fear can cast out even perfect love. You got to get rid of paranoia if you want to get the metanoia. Now, I taught my boys that when you go somewhere, you see someone you have a, a bad relationship with, that you don't want to see, you don't want to talk to, you don't want to be around. It's like they've got an evil spell over you. And the only way you break that spell is to walk across the room and put out your hand. And it doesn't matter whether they take the hand or not, once you've taken that step, the evil spell is broken. In this divided country, more than any other time, we have to find the courage to take those first steps. We simply learn to talk to one another all over again. What I've learned through these years, through participating in the annual High Holy Day cycle, has not only made me a better person, it's made me a better Christian. Okay, Book of Life. <laughs> what a time to be alive. We're still in the midst of a killer pandemic. And yes, vaccines help big time, but we still die. There are wildfires, fire and on the West Coast, hurricane after hurricane on the Gulf Coast and on the Atlantic Coast. We just finished an endless war in Afghanistan right before the anniversary of 9-11. I watched the Spike Lee film last night on HBO and relived that time. I don't know if you could remember what it felt like when we had no idea what would happen next. Okay. And we now have so many mass shootings this year, they average more than one a day. They're so common that we practically stopped reporting. It's like we're living, and I hope I say this right, it's like we're living the Unatana token. Who by fire, who by water, who by virus, and who by a crazy white man with an AK-47. I was glad to hear Steve sing, Rabbi Steve sing, the Leonard Cohen song. Who in mortal chains? Who in power, but who shall I say, is common. Friends, we have more than enough to remind us of our mortality. I do want to say that when I watched, this is only slightly off topic, when I watched that uh, film on 
reminded me of something else that's really important to remember. This city is so big, and there are so many of us, that we only get through it every day by a collective act of will. Millions of people decide when they wake up, we're going to make it work today. Because reality is, is no army, no police force could make this place work. We have to do it by our own will, by the thousand graces we extend to each other every day. And what happened on 9-11 is an illustration of that. Because we got it together and we did it without anyone telling us how. And one story that I'd never heard before that I saw was that, I don't know if you know, but there were over half a million people who were evacuated out of southern Manhattan by this voluntary boat flotilla. All these people with boats that sat on the ferries, other ferries, other individual boats, took over a half a million people from southern Manhattan to New Jersey. That's an example of what we do and how we do it, and that's part of why I love being here and living in this city. Okay. All right. This is what I want to leave you with. The one thing COVID and losing friends did was to make me think about my own mortality. You never know, you know? So I decided that I didn't want to leave anything unsaid, and I began to make a list of everyone I felt that I'd hurt or wronged or not acknowledged. And when we could see each other again, I started making appointments. I discovered something amazing. In most cases, it was weighing more heavily on me than it was them. We actually talked about it, invariably someone would say, you're still worried about that? I forgot about that years ago. What I began to realize is that there is a deeper well of grace and forgiveness in this world than we realize. At the end of the day, the person that is most difficult to forgive and the person that is the most difficult to receive the forgiveness from is ourself. So, maybe that's the deepest meaning of Yom Kippur. You can forgive yourself and move on and love on and live on. That's what it means to be in the book of life. So may your fast go swiftly. Leave nothing unsaid. Take that first step. And may this year ahead be filled with sweetness and light. sing for you a song that I wrote. Bob and I, we, we're, we're, we're in Manhattan all the time. We're uh, uh, doing, doing open mics and playing different gigs. And uh, we're kind of like a, uh, an odd couple. <laughs> Not so odd. Um, but uh, Bob and I are going to sing one of my songs. It's called Spark. And hopefully it leaves you with a... It should, it should leave you uplifted. Actually, Nate, you played on this uh, seven years ago when I recorded it.
I'm having too much fun with this to be Yom Kippur, you know? And now, however, we do, the mood is, is must change the mood, because this is our time for Yizkor. Uh, you have the, uh, you have your sheets there, and, uh, The message and the comfort of Yisgur is greater than the expression of personal mourning. It's also a message of gratitude. Well, of course, we're all sad about those we've lost. We should be grateful too for their blessings. They are still intrinsic in our values, in our ethics, and for better or worse, in our very DNA. The Yisker, which we're about to recite now, is a special memorial prayer for the departed. Yisker literally means remember, and it's not only the first word of the prayer, but it represents the overall theme. We recite the Yizkor four times a year, following the Torah reading on the last day of Passover, on the second day of uh, Shavuot, on Shemini Atzeret, which is coming up um, at the end of Sukkot, and today on Yom Kippur. In this prayer, we implore God to remember the souls of our relatives and our friends that have passed on. When we recite His Court, we renew and strengthen the connection between us and our loved ones, bringing honor to their departed souls, elevating them in their heavenly homes, and we somehow feel once more connected in a very real way to those now gone, but not forgotten from our lives. So please respond to each sentence as I say it. You have this, but just respond as we remember them. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, in the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, in the opening buds and in the rebirth of spring, in the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, in the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, in the beginning of the year and when it ends, when we are weary and in need of strength, when we are lost and sick at heart, when we have joys we yearn to share, so long as they, so long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us as we remember. Please join me in the reading of Psalm 23. You at home, you also have a PDF sent to you. You need to read it. Psalm 23. Together, we read. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He causes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still water. He restores my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the 
in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we, we say the Yuskor Memorial Prayer. You know, take a moment, silence, and remember those who you love are no longer with us. God remember forever my dear loved ones who have gone to their eternal rest. May they be at one with the one who is life eternal. May the beauty of their lives shine forevermore. May my life always bring honor to their memory. I'm going to chant for you the Il Malay Rahamin. Ashkina, <laughs> Adonai God, full of compassion, you dwell in the heights and in the depths. Grant true rest under the sheltering wings of your presence to our loved ones who have entered eternity. Let them find refuge forever in the shadow of your wings. And let their souls be bound up in the bond of eternal life. For you, the everlasting God, are their inheritance. May they rest in peace and all join together and we stay. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you are on Zoom and everyone here, please join with me in the Warner's Kaddish. You have it on your sheets. Yikadal, Yikadash, Shemei Rabbah, Bialma, Divra, Hirute, Bialmich, Malkute. Bhaye Hom, the Biome Hom, the Bhaye, the Hom, the Israel, Bagala, the Isman, Kari, the Imru, the Lin. Yehe, Shme, Rava, Mapura, the Alam, Lome, Omaya. Yipora, the Ishtaba, Yipaar, the Yitroma, the Yitnase. The Yithadar, Yitale, Yitalal, Shme, the Kudisha, Riku. La Ela, who la Ela, me call Mirkata Vishirata, Tushpakata Venechamata, Dami Ran Bialma, the Imru, eh? Yehe Shlama Rabba Minchamaya, the 
Chagim Aleinu, we all call Yisrael the Yiru. Amen. Who says Shalom Bimroma, who ya says Shalom. Aleinu, we all call Yisrael. We all call Yoshve Tevel, the Yiru. Rest in peace. But now we continue with a blessing for those who are ill. Uh, anyone here? Please, uh, please recite. Please give me the names. Uh, anyone here in the back table? As I look in the back table, just say their names out loud. Okay. Anyone you want to acknowledge as being ill? That next middle table? Okay. Just say their names out. Very good. Thank you. And now the middle aisle of this table, anybody here? Here in the middle. Over here. Over here. Anybody over here? Um, so I, I, let me just acknowledge uh, these people online. Um, our Alma, uh, Alma and Hillary, Mayor Ben Sorka, Sarita Steinberg, Greg Thomason, Rose Permiano, Hannah Bach, Shane Dahl, Zen, all who are suffering physically and emotionally, Lynn, Olivia, Anastasia, Evan Coleman, William Ben Julia, Jerry Lash, Hope, Gary, Mordechai, uh, Kathy, Lenore, Nilly, Terhe, Ginny Botwana, Marlene Bachaya, Amy, Marvin, Dr. Susan. Francis Johnson, Erna Sue, Schimber, uh, Mike Radden, and Marvin Gruber, Rabbi uh, Monty, uh, Rabbi Barbara Steinberg, uh, Rabbi Galitz. Thank you. And we'll join in a, in a verse of this uh, beautiful Mishabera. Ladies and gentlemen online, and 
uh, to all of you here. I want to, uh, I want to acknowledge again the uh, owner of the bitter end, uh, Paul Rizzo, who is uh, uh, not feeling well today, couldn't make it. Um, God bless him for keeping this iconic uh, place going. It's, uh, it's really an amazing place. So uh, God willing, we'll see you we'll all be together again next year. Um, I want to thank um, the band, uh, Kevin on bass. Carol Sleidwalter on a huge instrument, the baritone, and on the small instrument, the flute. She's got it all covered, Carol Sleidwalter. Uh, Frank Lentino on, on, on drums, who is wonderful. Thank you, Frank. I love you. I like to call Frank Levine on the high holidays, but you know. <laughs> and of course, Jack Lottman on piano. My darling wife, Carol, who's somewhere. Oh, there she is, over there. Um, Yavino Malkinu, that we're about to sing for you, uh, is we pray to God not only to reshape our personal lives, but the lives of, of humanity. We ask God not only to forgive us our shortcomings, but also to protect us in the, uh, in the coming year. Uh, so we're going to do that. But before, before I get there, one more thing. Those of you uh, this afternoon, those of you that are watching, or you know, you, if you got the Zoom link, uh, I do a Ne'ila closing of the gates service from my home, green screen. I'll probably put up something back, maybe something pretty, and uh, we, it's it's a lovely meditative hour and a half where I do traditional prayers and starts at four thirty, six o'clock we conclude, and uh, and I'll, I'll blow the show for Evans will blow the show for a few today, uh, but uh, but tonight. And I, I end my fast at six. And of course, if you're in California, I was joking with people watching, they can end their fast at three if they're watching me. Uh, uh, you know. uh, but, um, but there you are. Um, I just also wanted to tell you that Monday through Thursday, the online congregation, uh, Sim Shalom, my congregation, we have rabbis from all over the country that lead a service each night, weeknight at seven o'clock. So that's available if you need to say Kaddish, you just want to be part of a little community online. Uh, so we have that. And um, that's it from my heart. I just want to thank you all for all being here.
and let on this day give us strength, on this day bless us, on this day consider us for well-being. Uh, bum, bum. <laughs> Front, but I'm probably going to stay here. I, you know, we'll, we'll just fist bump, all right? <laughs> and, um, uh, and I just want to thank you all for, for attending and for being part of our community. And let's, you know, for the wonderful words of Pastor Bashir, who inspired, uh, inspired us. God willing, next year we'll all come together and, and we'll, we'll fill this place and we'll have no fear and everything will be, be good. Let's pray for that, too. Right. Uh, so you're going to tell Evan what to do. So let's do. We're going to do this. We're going to do a. Uh, uh, we're going to do a tequila, a charua, a tequila. Well, all right. That's so much fun. Sure. Tequila. All right. We'll make it up as we go. Sure. All right. All right. All right. Good. All right. I'll do that. Uh, uh, you guys say tequila. Tequila. Like that? <laughs> Do it. Uh, uh, say Shivori. Shivori. <laughs> Boy, James, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. James is giving us the reverb. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> say Jerua. Jerua. <laughs> you want to go another round? Yeah. 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 Give him another tequila. Tequila. Yeah. Yeah. Shivari. Let's let's see if we can throw. Shivari and Tarua. He's getting good. He's getting good at this. Uh, 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 give him a uh, give him another Tarua. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Last one, the Tequila Gadola. Go ahead. Yeah. Wow, best go for blowing in town. Stay up here. If I read the Adonai, Yavish Merecha. 